You ready? Here we go. Boom! That's from Maps Anabolic, the original Maps program, and we're going to give it away for free right now to one of you lucky viewers. Here's how you can win free access to Maps Anabolic, you lucky people. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours, but here's the deal. Give us some ideas for shows you would like to see us do. So in the comments, give us uh, ideas. Hey, I want you to do an episode on how to build a bigger, bigger chest, or I want you to do an episode on how to burn body fat the fastest in 30 days, or whatever. I don't care what the topic is. Leave it in the comments of the first 24 hours. If we pick your comment, number one, we'll do an episode based off of your comment, and number two, you'll win free access to Maps Anabolic. How cool is that? It's pretty cool. Also, one more thing before we get to the episode, subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. You got to turn on the notifications because otherwise you won't know when we drop episodes. And if you win, you won't know because we'll try to notify you, but you're not going to find out. Then you miss your prize and then you feel like an idiot. You don't want to do that. Um, oh, well, one more thing before we start the episode. We are running a 50% off sale on Maps Prime, Maps Prime Pro, and the Prime Bundle. Go check them out. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code June Prime with no space for the discount. All right? Enjoy the podcast. Dude, speaking of singing, yeah. so <laughs> I watched a movie. I actually watched three movies this weekend that I did not think I would enjoy as much as I did. <laughs> What's that? Pitch Perfect. Oh, there you guys go again. It's, <laughs> it's hella good. Uh, you know what? Justin, listen, Justin. I forgot God about that it. movie. Bro. Yeah. I forgot. So it's I, actually really good. It's hilarious. It is it's funny. fun. I promise you, it's hilarious. I, I promise. I just, you. I just have to play the guy that's just like. What, what is that? What does that like, remind? What's next? The the Notebook. You know. You no, know. Dude. You know. You it's know what? The same it, thing. It, it reminds me of the same surprise I got when I watched the Heartbreak Kid with. Uh, oh, I love that movie. Right. Yeah. It's you wouldn't think you know because that looks like a good. Ro- I did not think comic, I would like it. Ro- yeah, uh, that was good too. I no, I did not think I would like it. Jessica wanted to watch it. She's brought it up a million times, and so I'm like, all right, let's see what happens. It was hilarious. And I ended up watching the first one. I'm like, I love this. Let's watch the second one. Let's watch the third one. It was really good. <laughs> yeah, whatever, dude. I, I, it's, it's fine. I'll get you, I, I get you, I get you back. It was funny. It was, it, I, I, it's been a long time I'm, since I've watched glad. it, though. It does, it's the first one was, it's old. 2012. Right? Yeah, is that what it was? Yeah, and the yeah. second was 2015, and the third one was like a couple years ago. But it's one of those ones that I don't think I would have thought I would like it. And then you end up, which well, sometimes that's the best, right? When you're like, I don't know. And here, look, I'll tell you what, I'm going to be honest. Yeah, the comedy was, that's what made it a great. It was actually really funny, but here's the other thing too. Mm. It's to me, it's incredible when people can sing, da- dance, and act all at the same time, and they're good at all of them. Mm-hmm. It blows my mind. Like, well, how many damn talents you have? Isn't that actually? It's unfair, really. Well, isn't that a little? Isn't that more common than not in the like in the acting world? Because a lot of these guys and girls they do start, start off in Broadway. Yeah, they start the Broadway kind of route doing plays and stuff where you have to kind of do all of that, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, theater in general, when you're when you're kind of going up, and that's like the direction you want to go. I want to be an actor. Like most of them. Get uh, trained in singing well, and yeah. Anna K- Kendrick is that her name? Dancing. She's the main girl in it. She plays. Have you seen Trolls? The cartoon Trolls. Yeah. You know the the little girl one. Mm-hmm. She plays her voice, and the singing is actually no, her voice. She has a great voice. And then there's a song in the movie where she like uses a cup and she makes sounds with it with her hands, and then she sings. And I've heard that song. It's actually really good. It's her. It's her real voice. Mm-hmm. Like how talented could you be? It's so annoying. It reminds me when I used to train. Really smart. There was like a, I used to train a lot of doctors and surgeons. And when, when you get to know these people, you realize they're definitely a special breed of intelligence. Like to be a surgeon, you're really, you're really, really just a super smart person. And I remember I trained them and we talk about stuff and I'd start to realize just how talented they were. And then I'd say stuff like, so what kind of hobbies do you have? These are like yeah. vascular surgeons and heart surgeons and general surgeons. What do you, what do you do for fun? Yeah. Oh, you know, I'm a classically trained pianist. Uh, excuse, what do you mean classically trained? Like, how good are you? You watch them play. You're like, you're. <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. Where do you find the time to do all this stuff? Yeah, so damn. Now, what's your th- every now and then you'll get like a Hugh Jackman though. Yeah, you know? he'll he'll find his way into some like musical, and you're just like, <laughs> yeah, dude, awful. Not, not no, good. Hugh Jackman did um the one musical that was epic. Limits. You liked it? No, the other one, the one where he's like the circus one. Oh yeah. He's not that great of a singer. Was it him? I, there was like a definitive, like manly kind thought, of actor that that like, yeah. kind of crossed over into that. I, thought, and I was like, I thought he, I thought he was good. Maybe it know. wasn't him. Yeah, I, there was somebody that had a really. Terrible I feel like voice. you're wrong because I think that was a wasn't that a really good one. What was that circus one? No, called? I think you're right. I think he did actually get was it like, Dumbo praise. No, not, not Dumbo. Dumbo. Doug, what was the circus one with Eugene? Yeah. The Greatest, Greatest Showman. Showman. I knew you would know, Doug. Thank you. Great job, Doug. Yeah, Doug's Anyways. a huge, 
Hugh Jackman fan. He's a big da- dancer fan. Yeah. Yeah. Big so, musicals. Yeah. Uh, no, he was he was also good in. Started back in the day with Fred Astaire. Mm-hmm. Big fan. Back Le, uh, Les Miserables was super good. He had him in there. I never watched. You that. know who was in that too? Who's the guy that played Gladiator? Uh, uh, Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe. He was in that. He couldn't sing. That's who it was. That's who it That's was. That's who it was. Damn That's it. who it yes. was. Uh, Sorry, okay. Hugh Jackman. And yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, because he was pretty good, man. Yeah. 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 I thought he was I, I, was, I like no, him. I thought like he was pretty good. Speaking of pretty good, uh, tell me about that food you sent a picture over to the group. Oh. It was like a steak yeah. and mushrooms. Yeah, daddy and- cooked. You know, I had to give some credit, though, to Douglas. Like, he is the one that first... Yeah. God, that's the staple trucky meal for us. It is. Right? It you is with the, the mushrooms. Yeah, oh. sautéed mushrooms, sautéed onions. Sauté, do you sauté them in the ghee like he does, and the whole ghee and uh, onion, or I mean uh, garlic salt. That's and, so good. Yeah, and, and like you, you do it for about an hour, right? So the mushrooms and the onions get about an hour of of sautéed, and then the steaks oh. are a quick. I could eat it by itself. Eight to twelve minutes. Yeah. What steak are you cooking? Uh, I use the the butcher box ribeye. So, mm-hmm. and I really like so. And again, this is from. Uh, play from Doug's book what I like about using the grass-fed beef because it's a it's a leaner cut mm-hmm. right when you do the grass-fed yeah. then I get to kind of a bit longer well no no then, less yeah less and then mm. you also get to you know really? drown it in the ghee and mushrooms and onions mm-hmm. so it gives yeah. it even more a juicy kind of flavor I put I pour it so over the like top sear of it. both sides and yeah so I have a I, I can't I YouTube this guy one time and you, I, it's a it's a two minute rotation. So and if you do a good job, you you get your temperature just right. You should only yeah. You're have. real scientific about your mate. Your mate. <laughs> you are. I see with the timer. Yeah, you're well, putting it on. You got to make sure the well, right temperature. You know what? The, for a long time, I didn't do that. That was just my my ego, like wanting to be like, I don't need a timer. Yeah. I don't need <laughs> this. But it's like, dude, I just if, feel the meat. Yeah, you know. And my my brother in law, like, yes, he, you do. So he talks a, <laughs> he talks yes, a lot of do. shit. A, sorry for yeah. me using tools like the Traeger and some of that because he thinks. But I'm about it. Turn it out good. I don't care if I gotta use my phone and timers and all that stuff like that. Like I'll do whatever it takes to cheat to have good meals. Are so. you guys doing the flank yet from uh, from butcher? No, you've been saying that forever. You know what the problem have is? I'm lazy about changing my my things on. It's rec- so easy. Go I, on your phone I, and change it. And I don't do that. What the hell's wrong? With I don't you? run that. Katrina side. does everything for you like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> she <laughs> does everything yeah. for you. Hey, don't be I'm mad. Like all New York. Don't be bad because my burgers. wife is awesome. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's good response. Yeah, yeah. don't be a yeah. hater. No, so the flank is. Is, first of all, obviously it's thin, right? So it's a big piece of meat, thin. Yeah. You want to cook it rare. And I, what I do is I go uh, rock salt, so it's nice and chunky. Then I do garlic powder and then rosemary. And I do it on both sides. And it comes out. In, and I, I cook it to like a temperature of like 128. So it's like 20. It's like rare-ish. Oh, man, you cut that into strips. So good. It's my favorite. I have it always on the regular uh, rotation now. Uh, from Butcher Box, yeah, yeah, super Try good. That. Are you eating a lot? You're eating. Lots. That's all you're eating right now. All all burgers, steaks. Like it literally is like those two things are like the yeah. majority of what I'm putting in my body. Now, now how, not, how dialed do you stay on the weekend? Like, are you are you like uh, were you good this weekend? Good this weekend, except I did have a few drinks because I, I I played poker with some of my friends on Saturday, but. Uh, I kept that even to just like three uh, whiskeys on the rocks and, 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 you know, and tried to keep it just to that. And so I, that was it though. I mean, I'm, I'm not like I was, I had steak and I actually brought it with me uh, to grill. And so, you know, we all had that, uh, did the, the coffee rub again and, and showed that. Oh, I haven't no, done that so. yet. Am I not invited to that? Cause you're afraid I'm going to take all your money. You know, we, we, we had that a long time ago, <laughs> dude. So I'm, I'm a different player. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you want to, to get I, I do, I do want some okay. of this action. Okay. Did Adam used to beat you all the time? Uh, I want some of that action. I think action he did. Sure. I, I don't know. I was very young in my in my skills back then. Yeah, so. Cards are my game. But I yeah, like I I enjoy it. It's just something that an excuse to get together and um I haven't seen these guys in a while. But these are like your buddies that go all the way back to even high school or college. What is it? High school. Oh yeah, yeah. it's like high school buddies. But uh, yeah, it's. It's funny because I actually got pulled back in a little bit to helping out with the high school football team. And um, this is one of those things. I just started talking to one of my friends who was going to help me like remove trees. And he's like, now there's this changeover of the head coach for the varsity team. And so I was like, now have you done it yet? So today is going to be the first like group workout for the team. Oh my God. So you're going to go in and you're going to work with a bunch of high school kids. I'm taking over. Now you do realize, I'm going to say this right now because it's today, right? It's later today. First one. Uh They're not the same as when you were a kid. 
I know. <laughs> you, you might offend or scare someone. No, that's the point. It's football. <laughs> okay. it's, it's football. You are no, supposed we to. we talked about Bro, it's this. different. That's it's way why, different. That's why I want to get involved because the head coach I really like, he went through the program with, with me and with my other friends and has that same – like mentality of of that that mental toughness and and really just you know getting back to to the roots of what made us successful and and, and we were like one of the best teams that ever came out of that school for a specific reason because of our mentality and, and doing the extra amount that nobody else would do and being champions like all of that we're going to be planting seeds in these kids heads and if if there's the whiny snivelly shit it's just not going to fly do you remember <laughs> do you remember the, the viral uh baseball baseball coach video oh yeah, yeah. you've seen that one right yeah, have you I seen that, that one that. oh that? yeah i love that i totally yeah. feel like that's gonna be justin i think that's gonna be hilarious it's, it, and you know like i i don't i, I like i was thinking about that too because like it is gonna be different they're they just haven't f- like I've been exposed to, you know, certain kinds of men and, and people that are just like, listen, like, like this is a, a tough sport. This is a, this is something you're going to get hurt. And, and so we have to take this very seriously. And if you're going to you complain about doing, you know, X, Y, Z or not like cover your assignments or, you know, you're, you're not going to take this seriously, go take a hike. I, you Can know, we please send Eli to come get some footage least, of this? Yeah. I would like to see you offend like, yeah, like hey, we don't need that. you around. That's uh, maybe the bottom line. Could you set maybe up a we tri- shouldn't could film you, them. Could you film want, it? Maybe because we don't, have to, we, we don't have to release it. That's true. <laughs> so, I mean, at least go tripod this shit you know so what? we got some footage. But, I mean, I don't know. I like Because here's the thing. Like, I was, and I was so motivated because there was like a changing of the guard. So, uh, you know, our old coaches that were there, they did a fantastic job. But they all had kind of had that feeling like it was a different vibe. And like they were just kind of, their time was done. And so now like, you know, coming in. They, they were doing CrossFit and they were just doing this nonsense for their workouts. And I just, oh, it was like nails on a chalkboard to me every time I would like listen to what they were doing with the program. And so now it's like, I, I, I'm like, hey, man, I would love to help at least with the workouts. At least let me kind of come in and, and show them the way. Oh, like this so is, there's, there's a way to get powerful, strong, fast, specifically uh, to enhance the skill in, in position by position. So, uh, you know, that's something I'm totally going to take Dude, over. This is going to be so fun. Yeah. You know what? The, a lot of people don't realize this, but a lot of the value of playing a sport or doing something competitive, there's obviously value in the organization of it, working with other people, knowing what it feels like to have people depend on you, being competitive. But there's also a lot of value in that toughness that you learn, you get from some of these coaches that – where it's like, okay, oh yeah, oh, I understand your knee hurts, but guess what? We're still going. You got to keep. Going. That's a life lesson. That's uh, kind of guys, Overco- what life overcoming adversity. It man. is one of the best places, and learning how to work with others. I that, mean, that, and exactly those yes. two those two things may be two of the greatest lessons that sports teaches almost every totally. kid. You know, yeah. I remember as a kid the first time something like this hit me. I was twelve or eleven. I'm at judo. I used to do judo when I first started doing judo at San. It's a, a club here in San Jose. It's old. It's been around since 1950 something. It's San Jose Buddhist Judo Club. So it's one of the oldest judo schools in the country. And the instructors when I was a kid were these volunteers, and most uh, many of them were from Japan. So these old school, 60, 70 year old Japanese instructors from Japan, right? So they don't. They literally don't care. They don't care if you're going to whine or whatever. They don't want to hear none of that stuff. You show up. You have to clean this the whole place. When you're done, you have to sweep and clean. You have to show lots of respect. And I'll mm-hmm. never forget this. I went with my cousin, and my cousin, one of my cousins was a bit of a whiner. And he was always trying to get out of doing a lot of the exercises. Mm-hmm. He didn't mind. So, oh, my foot hurts. Oh, my whatever hurts. And there was this little, I swear to God, five foot four old Japanese instructor, didn't speak very good English. But you know not to fuck with this guy. And my cousin was like, oh, I, I can't do the, the drill because my toe hurts. So the sensei goes, huh, come here, come here. So he like walks over to him and he grabs a broom with, you know, the broom handle and everything. And I thought he was going to be like, sweep. Yeah. I thought he was going to be like, you go sweep. You smack all our He toes. hits him in the toe. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> like he stomps it. And my cousin, ah. And he goes, now your toe hurts. Go sit down. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> the sensei just hit one of us? I was like, is this legal? Like what's going on here? Oh, that's great. It was great. That's same, like old school. Same sensei. I'll never forget. Same guy. I was talking during one of his instructions. I was kind of like giggling or whatever. And he walks over to me and he judo throws me so hard. He knocked the wind out of me. Yeah. And it was like, this was the environment that we, there was also very respectful and odd stuff, but 
you can't do that anymore. Nowadays, yeah, but it's so. like it's a contained uh, environment for it's an outlet for yeah. aggression, and there's just so much value there. Yeah. And, and my main motivation because it's it's high school, and my kids aren't even in high school yet. You know, obviously, so I. I just want to make sure that they see it. Like they want to be, I want them to be around it. I want them to look up to these kids uh, like I did. I looked up to to the high school kids that they might as well have played in the NFL for me, like right, going right. to these high school games with these big towering uh, guys, uh, you, you know, and like going head up against each other. And, and no. it, 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 it was just one of those things. I want to, I want to bring that environment and all, what I experienced. To all joking kids. aside, those kids are going to be very lucky. I'm serious. This is all joking aside. They're going to be very lucky to have you. You're going to, you're, you're going to be one of the best coaches they ever had. It's going to be very, very valuable. For are you bringing kids. your boys with you? Yeah, so they're oh, going to cool. come to practices with oh, me every cool. now and then. Oh, that's so great. And then hopefully, yeah, that's the game. So, great. so how often sideline. are you doing it? So what's the plan? I know I saw you were texting in the group um, thread about this, but I didn't see what... Yeah, I I mean, I again, like, obviously we're super busy, and this is something that I've always wrestled with because I always wanted to do it, but it was just like, it doesn't make sense, but it's never going to make sense with what we do. So I'm just trying to I'm just trying to do, if it's after hours, like around five, then I'm like, I'm, I can make it, or if we're not out of town, I'll make it. So really it's just about as many uh opportunities i can be there i'm gonna be there but if i'm not around i'm not around uh, they're totally cool with it so does this so mean fun. too you're gonna be like officially on the field for friday games and everything like that oh, yeah. oh yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah yeah well yeah, so we gotta go then. absolutely yeah. we have to go oh i'd love that yeah love you guys bro, are you kidding yeah. me that'll be awesome yeah, so, get field passes and everything feel totally bro yeah. i got you I all right like so uh i have an article that when i read i thought uh, this is not real, but it is. It's a real article. You guys ready for this? Okay. Mm. This is wild. Here's the title. FBI finds horrific Frankenstein-like experiments at body donation facility in Arizona. What? <laughs> yes. Okay. So okay, define Frankenstein-like projects here. I want to hear we go. this. Okay. Here what we go. Here we go. you say this is Arizona? Yeah. There's a body donation uh, places. I guess when you die or whatever, they'll, they'll take the body and they'll donate organs and whatnot. So they store the bodies there, right? So FBI agents stumbled upon a house of horrors after raiding a body donation company, in Arizona, discovering a warehouse containing refrigerators full with penises, buckets of limbs, pools of blood, and a human head sewn onto another body in a Frankenstein manner. What? What? Yeah, dude. Why? Uh, what? No more than that? You got to give us more. It says the former owner of this particular place, Stefan Gore. <laughs> oh, great. His name. last name is yeah, Gore. Perfect. Pleaded guilty to one count of illegal control of an enterprise in 2015 and received a sentence of four years probation. However, he now faces a civil lawsuit. Uh, so anyway, 33 so, plaintiffs are suing the body broking business, alleging the remains of their family members were uh, obtained through false statements mm. and their bodies were not stored, treated or disposed okay, of. Okay, so is, is there a, is there a, I mean, is there a big black market for, for organs like, from, like, no. and, like body parts? Well, what was from, his, yeah, what was his company? So he was obviously yeah. storing these bodies and what, what was the purpose? I, I think he, okay, there's no money for sewing. I'll read a little more. That's why I don't understand. Like where, he's what? obviously a weird sicko. Yeah. Obviously. 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 Look at this. Yeah. So they, they. Just, can Doug pull up a picture of what this guy looks like? Uh, <laughs> I mean, you can look the guy up. So it says, so former. All, all pickled wieners. This is <laughs> former FBI agent stated that he saw various unsettling scenes at this particular place in Phoenix, including numerous dead bodies that appeared to been play, have been played as with as a morbid joke. One of the most shocking was a small woman's head sewn onto a large male body. Oh my God. So here's, here's some of the stuff that they found. Uh, oh gosh, the court documents also contained a price list for various body parts. Whole body with no shoulders or head, $2,900. Torso wow. with head, twenty four hundred dollars. So he was so so selling these off. So there was a black market. Oh, that's crazy! Wow, that is. Who crazy. buys this? Uh, I know. Uh, right? Can you Dude. can you look that up? Or where, where to buy a dead body? Oh. Have you ever tried to Google that? Whoa, they found. <laughs> listen, they said, I can't I mean, say I have. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Sal has. Yeah. I don't know if I should start. I, Sal's <laughs> history is pretty dark. Could so. you could you Google that well, one time? Apparently, for us? the body broking industry is very unregulated, especially in Arizona. So who, I guess that who, nobody checks. What do you? <laughs> That sucks. Dude. What do you do with that though? That What's the suck. what? Why do you buy a a a, a, a a I don't understand. What would you do with it? I have no idea. It's experiments, dude. Obviously, I mean, there's some yeah. weird people with a out dead there. body. Yeah, there's Google some... it, Doug. Come on, put it in your browser. Well, <laughs> I got this, this guy. Is the, this this is, guy? is the guy okay. here. So I'm not gonna lie. Uh, Make chimera. Is that his family right there? 
Uh, he looks like he's got a normal family. All I know is his face looks Dude, like someone that would do this. His face is for sure like a, a, a tell. Yeah, like I, like if I if I just saw this guy on the street, I'd say yeah. to myself, I'm like, he, uh, he I'm probably, my eye on this guy. He probably has sex with dead bodies or something weird like necrophilia. <laughs> you know? Dude, how creepy and disgusting and scary is that? Imagine if you're the FBI agent, you walk in. Oh, oh. Man. Five facts. Now you're his know. wife. It's immediate, like divorce. Oh. Like, I'm out there. I don't know. Look how happy she looks. She looks like. Well, she... that's before she found out that he. <laughs> oh, you don't think she knows? He's off. mangling body parts. You don't think she knows? How does your husband doesn't have a jar, hundreds of jars of penises, and you not know as a wife? He's got like two daughters too. Come yeah, but on, they're, at his, they're at his business. You think his wife goes through that stuff all the time? I don't know. Do you think you could hide it from your wife? Uh, what if I had a bunch of jars of penises in my yeah. office? Yeah, I would have. Mean, that time try. that you did, did you? Yeah, no, I mean, at that time that I did. How, yeah, where'd you store it? Yeah. You know, hey, like, honey, where'd you get that dildo? That was yeah, really realistic. Be, oh, <laughs> gross. Oh my god. Oh, a real you know, safe place. Boy, yeah. the technology's gotten good these days with these sex toys. I tell you, <laughs> oh, that yeah. thing is. Uh, I didn't even know there was. A, I didn't even know this was like. Is there a name for this type of person that's into this stuff? I don't know, dude. Justin, I feel like no. You would I mean, know just this. like just the ones that have sex with dead bodies. That's a necrophilia. That one, necrophilia yeah. but I don't know what that. So is. I would imagine that's actually a big problem. Frankenstein. So if, if that's a big problem, then that's what I would imagine he would be selling on the black market. Then. Uh, would be people that want to have sex with these dead. No, bodies. This, I just want a torso. Well, the yeah, or- yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> It's very specific. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I would like, like a, forums a female got, head yeah. on like a big masculine body, <laughs> just, actually, if yeah. I could. Yeah. Just really just the rib Maybe cage. that's what it is. Maybe yeah. it was a bunch of like, like requests. Oh, it gets me going. Maybe this guy built a network yeah. of these. What are they called? Necrophiliacs? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. maybe he built a network of these people and he started taking requests. Yeah. Like, yeah. I want one. Yeah. I want one. I don't want a, the arm. I just want the arm socket. Yeah. I want, uh. a, I want a black penis on an Italian man and a, <laughs> with a woman's head. That's what I would like. And I'm willing to pay very specific $5,400. Dollars. You imagine he shows up and he's, he's like, like, so hmm, I got a. Uh, I got some cutting to do. He's like, so you got dead bodies here, right? He's like, yeah. He's like, well, I got a. Uh, I don't know, man. Just a weird, you know, request. Yeah. How much would a jar of dicks cost? I don't know <laughs> do you have a jar of dicks? I mean, that's yet? the ultimate prank, right? You send somebody that, like, hey, here, a, a jar of dicks. I don't know. I just uh, said, thank you. There, <laughs> there, imagine there, dropping the jar. There's a company. <laughs> yeah. There's a company that you can send uh, a bag of dicks to somebody. I've seen that. I've seen that. Yeah. yeah. What's it called? They're not real dicks, though. No, of course they're not real. <laughs> they're, dicks. They're, 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 they're fake. Let's take it to the next level that is, that's, that's way <laughs> next speaking level. of that's that, what i would do if that's if, like logan paul level right i feel there, like right? if someone were yeah. to send you a bag of dicks that that would be your your one up right like yeah. all right send me a bag of dicks yeah. I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna send you a jar of real dicks real, see how you like funny. see how you like that hey, one buddy. Throw, throw it at someone <laughs> <laughs> whap Dude. disgusting wow. look at in the u.s market for human bodies almost anyone can dissect and sell the dead what? This is a problem. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, you know the or- the that, black market that settles it. I, you're cremating the me. The black market organ uh, market is huge because it's so regulated. There's like a wait list for organs, and in the black market, you could buy kidneys, you could buy wasn't, liver. Wasn't there a movie about that where like people that would go down to Mexico would get kidnapped and they would take out like. One of their kidney. Like, now, is that real or is that a uh, what do they call? I mean, it's a urban horror story. Le- yeah. yeah, urban legend. I, where... No, I think that's a thing, Doug. No, I think it might be real. Yeah, Ooh. there's probably some or, look, cases. Look up organ thieves, Mexico, mm. Mexico organ thieves. Boy, you're gonna have a browser full of some neat shit in the yeah. next week. We're about yeah. to get the FBI. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he looks up. Yeah. Is the is yeah. the body yeah. trade yeah. market regulated? <laughs> right. <You know>? yeah. <laughs> organ thieves. Yeah. How do they do it? Mm. You know? Do they get caught? You know, that's yeah. the next one. Yeah. Bags of fertilizer. Next, go look that up. Oh my gosh! <laughs> but boy, that's a, I didn't know that. I thought it was an urban legend. That's the one where the person goes out and then next thing you know they wake up in the bathtub full of ice and then they yeah. notice that they have incisions. Isn't that a movie? Wasn't that, what movie was that? It was in a movie. It was Minority Report, but that I mean, obviously that was where they like he got different eyes to be able to like uh, scan. What do you find, then, Doug? It seems that this is a true thing that organizations have engaged in kidnapping people with the victims being killed and their organs harvested for. The illegal organ trade. Well, you know how much do they, I think a kidney goes for like twenty grand, something mm. like that. It's got to be expensive, right? To be if to be worth killing somebody over. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Well, now, the prob- now Google how much does it cost to kill somebody, Doug? No. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see. How, I just want to see how far we can get Doug to go. It's like going to Home Depot and buying tarp and yeah, rope and biscuit, <laughs> yeah, yeah. duct tape. Yeah. That's it. Rope, duct tape, tarp. Yeah. You guys sell any chloroform? Yeah. I want to know what it smells like. Uh, you know, that's the thing. Uh, anyway, uh, scary frightening disgusting stuff but it's unregulated which i had no idea I had no idea that it was that 
Wow, on regular. That is enlightening. Yeah. Now, are you guys? How are you guys about that for yourselves? Where it's no big deal if you when you die, you'll donate your organs for. Yeah, dude. No I problem. Mean, right? It's yeah. just it's just the body. Yeah, yeah. like it. Uh, uh, but there's again, some cultures that's like a huge no no though, right? Man. Yeah. Like to, well, it's like yeah. Again, that's all like your your belief system and your traditions and all yeah. that kind of stuff. But yeah. uh, I know that. I was tripping out on that because like with mummies and everything, like their whole thing was that they were, uh, eventually like, like science would catch up and they'd be able to resurrect, uh, them. And, and this is actually like possible, right? Cause you get the DNA samples from them still and you'd be able to clone them. That's my only fear of giving it away. What I if, don't want to be cloned. In our, in our, there's a lot of weird shit happening. What if, you know, we get to come back. You might need it. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Have you guys ever read stories about, memories being stored in cells, not just in your brain. Mm -hmm. And so the stories of people that'll get a heart transplant and then they'll start to have memories or take on the characteristics of the person whose heart that they took. That's wild. Have you guys ever read this stuff? It's really when you have a pig heart. Cause <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> oh my God. Beastly. Yeah. Like, I don't want out of it. nowhere. Yeah, honey, yeah. I don't want yeah. bacon anymore for yeah. some reason. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, yeah. it's, I don't know. It doesn't, doesn't taste right. It doesn't taste right. You yeah. get any slop? Yeah. No, but uh, it, weird. If you read about some of these stories where people will, all, they'll just have like very strange changes in their personalities and then they'll find that the person whose organ they took was like so that. I thought that I was an urban that. legend. That's real? I know. I've, I've read stories. I don't know if it's real, like they've studied it, but I've read, read like stories like R.L. Stein stories? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I've read stories. Yeah. No, that's definitely been, yeah, there's been cases. I've seen the same thing. Like, there's been a few cases out there where people are, like, talking about that. It's like, true. Oh, it changed my behavior. See, I don't, see, Adam, I don't, do you ever go in rabbit holes on the internet like Justin and I do? I, I, don't, I don't think he does, so. <laughs> I, I, I don't. Just, you, you know how fun, fun that is? I, I, I do on different stuff that's not as cool as your guys' stuff. Stuff. Yeah, there's, there's layers, dude. It's yeah. an onion. You never, you, know, you never just get curious down. about weird shit. Not weird stuff. I go down rabbit holes on things that I'm interested in, and then I'll just in, a, in YouTube. And YouTube is the most dangerous because they do such a good job yeah, with the algorithm do. of like sending you. And before you know it, you're off on a far trail. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I found some great content that way though. So I mean, I I do just no. Not I read there, one time I was going down the rabbit hole and I was reading about some of the most inhumane experiments that people have done or had been done on humans. Mm -hmm. Have you ever read the one, and I don't know if it was real or not, but I read about it and it was terrifying. The Soviets did a study on humans where they kept them up for as long as they could. Oh, yeah. Have you read about this uh -huh. one, Justin? Yeah. Where they didn't allow them to sleep, and then apparently That's they 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 went so mad, <laughs> it's psychotic. That, well, that they, it? they, they one of them killed the others and yeah. ate them, started yeah. eating them. What? Yeah, them. yeah, they just became these like what? like yeah, dude, like rabid beasts, like well, eating they, the other. That's ones. supposed to be like one of the like number one ways of torturing, right? Keeping them up with loud music and doing weird shit like that. Like that's like so torturous. Oh, you, you lose yeah. your you literally within a few days, the, your odds of becoming mentally deranged or get schizophrenic. It was like, now, it's like 70% or something crazy. Now, do like you that. ever think yeah. like, okay, so like when we have like these weird things, like like the whole idea of the stories of like um, zombies, like that that's where the the origin of it came from, something like that where- Couldn't maybe, get sleep, right? No, where there's people being tortured or kept well, from well, having sleep. that's like the whole thing with vampires with Vlad the Impaler. Like they're just trying to figure out why he was so evil and why he got off on like just, you know, basically killing all these people on spikes. Yeah, well, you know the term ring my bell? I think that's where it comes from. Ring my bell comes from? I think that's the term. Dead it, ringer. Dead ringer. Sorry. Thank you, Doug. God, sometimes Doug's on point. Oh, yeah, because they'd bury people, and some a lot of times they'd be alive still. Yeah, because back in the day, Oh, yeah, they out. had a little rope, and they could, they could ring it. Because right? you know why they did that? There were times when they'd have to move bodies, and they'd open up the casket, and they'd see scratch marks on the inside, oh. like somebody was Ugh, trying to get out. Ugh, it just mm. does something. Like, oh, it's being, awful. Hands down, that has to be the number one worst way to go, would be buried alive. Alive? Yeah, I'd rather drown. I'd rather burn. I'd rather... I would... Buried alive would be... Yeah, that's, Ugh, that's, dude, I get the chills just brutal. thinking about just, that. You have to make peace with the fact that you're. You know, Did you ever know. see that movie uh, with? Um, uh, I want to say it's Ryan, whatever uh, Ryan is. It Ryan, not Ryan Gosling, but the other Ryan uh, Reynolds. Yes, Ryan Reynolds. Thank you. God damn, Doug's on you know, fire today. What are you doing, doing right now? Yeah, Doug? what did you do? What are you doing yeah, over there? Huh? Are you Taking some your of that again? Pure I know. Or something? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was a free. That would be. I know it'd yeah. be great for a commercial day on that man. What's going on over here? No, he, uh, yeah, he was in this movie where the whole thing was shot. He was buried alive in a coffin. 
It's oh, I remember that. I never saw that movie. Is yeah. it good? Oh. I mean, or to give you anxiety the whole time, dude. I couldn't watch that. I, I mean, it made me uncomfortable even watching the one with Quentin Tarantino, where oh, where what's her name is in the yeah uh, Kill, Kill Bill, Bill, where she <laughs> she was like doing the one inch punch. Yeah. So he. So uh, well, what it happened? I didn't know going into the movie, so I, I remember watching it before I had heard about it. And I, I only stuck around because I couldn't believe that this this movie was taking... I was like 20 minutes. I'm like, 20 minutes? This has been the whole scene. 30, 40, an hour? We haven't left this. I'm like... And then I was so curious. Are they going to end this movie and this guy's never going to get it's out? It's called Buried. Oh, that's, that's it. That's was it awful. a good movie? I mean, it wasn't horrible. I stayed in. Oh. I watched... But I mean, again, a, a lot of what kept me in... Was I don't think that's ever been done. I yeah. don't think there's ever been a movie where. Well, some, there's some some of the best movies of all time are only ever were only in one or two scenes. Mm -hmm. So like uh, Twelve Angry Men was all almost all of it was in that where the jurors were or what's the other Quentin Tarantino Reservoir Dogs. Oh uh, yeah, it's literally it, the car chase and then the entire rest of the movie is in one scene yeah, one area well another thing was like castaway for an example of a like one of the longest um amount of time before there was any dialogue mm. it, but you're you're captivated by it because yeah. there was so much he was like working through and it, but like there was no he wasn't speaking and then finally he had wilson to kind of like yeah. speak to but you're just like i'm watching a movie right now and nobody's talking so i just watched one this weekend that was like this and it was actually really good it's based on a true story i want to say the name of it was profile i just text katrina to double check the name i think it's profile and basically it's about this uh reporter who goes undercover to try and find these jihadists and that that recruit like young girls and so she goes as this young girl who has just recently <clears throat> converted and that he tries to recruit him over there and the whole thing is literally her sitting at her computer going back and forth between let's see if Doug, you pulling up doug See if this. Yes, that's it. I nailed it. Profile, actually, really good. Really, mm. and the it's literally the whole movie is her sitting in there communicate. It's like you watching her, uh, you know, type him back and forth on social media, and then them Zoom calling, and like that's the whole movie. Wow, and it's really. good. I like movies like that. I like movies that are different that challenge t the typical norm. movie. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's all about the writing. I at mean, that if point, right? yeah, yes, if you hit it, I mean, it's really good. Like if you can, if you can pull that off, right? Of like literally yeah. one one room, be able to do a whole entire plot. I mean, that just speaks to the. I'm a content. big di I'm a big yeah. dialogue guy. I love really good dialogue no, in you're movies. Not. No, you're not. I, Doug what? and I. Doug what the hell? Yeah, what are you talking about? about? He's a liar, dude. Tell me he's I'm a liar, Doug. What are you talking he's about? A, he's a liar. No, it's I, a, I liar. liar. He's a <laughs> <laughs> he likes a variety. Yeah. I like a variety, but yeah. I love good dialogue. Yeah. Quentin Tarantino movies, one of the reasons why their movies are so uh, good yeah. is they don't cool talk. Cool-ass dialogue. And they don't talk like you normally would in I real life. I agree with that. It's, yeah. it's, it's weird dialogue, but for some reason it works. Yeah. It's what makes it. Reservoir Dogs is my favorite example of that. Mm -hmm. That whole movie, the dialogue is just so Yeah, I mean. Quentin Tarantino is a, just a master for sure. Yeah. I mean, you brought up the other day when I was challenging be best movies that came out, the Jojo Rabbit, and I would have to agree with you guys that that's probably up there with one of the most like oh. creative, well written, well shot, great cast. Oh yeah. So there's another movie he did that I watch with uh, my kids, and and it was like such a random movie. I didn't even know he produced it, but it had um it had that that kid that was a big you know, rotund kid from New Zealand. Uh, I, I forget the name of it, but it has this, it, it's, it's a really like endearing story about this kid. that's like, um, from, uh, what do they call those, those places where, where basically hostel? Grow, no, not a hostel, uh, where you adopt a kid from orphanage orphanage. Thank you. And so he finds his way to this family and, and basically like the mom dies. The mom was like really sweet with him and all stuff. But what I like about the director is he takes, he takes a lot of really serious, uh, type of, of subject matter. And he, he, he takes it through a lot of like the child perspective and makes it somewhat whimsical. Uh, so this, this is the the guy the the same director that did Jojo Rabbit. Oh, really? Are you gonna yeah. give us the name, or are you gonna tease I, us? I don't remember the <laughs> name of it. Wow. I'm waiting for the name here, and I'm like, come wow. on, guy. I, I I'm trying to Talk rack about, my brain as I'm talking. What a, what a he tease. Was blue balls. <laughs> there. I'm sure it was like, okay, okay. What is Ricky it? Ricky Baker. What is it? It's got this song in there. This is why I remember. It's Do you like, even have like, like, how bad is like? What's the song? That'll help us. Ricky Baker. Uh oh, uh, Ricky Baker. There you go. Now you can find it, everybody. Stupid. You're not looking to help me find it. Do you even have like? What's rejected? Is it like? 
idea of it, like even now close to a guess, like what the name is. Maybe it's all right. Yeah. All you gotta do is look up the director from Jojo Rabbit, look up all the movies he's done, and yeah. then you got it. And I and I always mess up his name too. It's like Taiki. Like Wa- Taika Waititi. Taika Waititi. Mm. Yeah, Taika's why what? I love him, dude. He's 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 masterful with what he's been doing. Yeah, you, w- what a great word to use, by the way. Whimsical. Mm-hmm. That's a great descriptive word, Justin. Yeah, you know what I mean. It is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean that was Jojo Rabbit, right? Adam's was... going to use it next. He's going to say it wrong. He's going to say it. He does that. <laughs> you know, what I'm you got to practice. Anyway, it's a great saying? movie. Yeah. You'll figure it out. Hey, we'll I, put it in the show notes. I got some good news. You guys want to hear some exciting? Of course. I mean, I guess it's good news. So this report just came out. More and more interesting stuff is coming out about uh, you UFOs. Know, what we just no, what we just went through. You know, this uh, whole pandemic. Did you, can I interrupt you real quick? Though I asked you, did you respond to me about? Did you watch that uh, Close Encounter with the Fifth Kind? Not the Fifth Kind. Yeah, that's a, that's a new one that's out. I thought yeah. for sure. The third, one of you guys? third kind was where I stopped. Yeah. Is this it, Doug? I don't know which one you're talking about, Justin. Okay, one of those? yeah, it's, it's okay. So the on the bottom row, it's the second one. He did Ragnarok. Yeah, he did Ragnarok, oh, and no. he's also he just did Hunt the, the latest for the Thor. Wil- wilder people. Hunt for the wilder people. Hunt for the wilder people. Well, no wonder wilder you forgot people. the name. Yeah, I know. It's, it's oh, so wilder, ran- wilder people. Doesn't yeah, make yeah. any sense. Yeah, it's I want to watch. Totally that. random. He, what else? So good though. What else did great. he do? You just said he did what else? He did he did the latest Thor, um, uh, Thunder something. Oh, the one that hasn't come out. The one yet? that hasn't come out. The yet. one where it's God of Thunder and something. And he's also done an episode for Mandalorian. So he was oh, behind. Uh, yeah, I mean, the Ragnarok was the best one. I think by best far. Oh yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, it was one of the best. He's one of my favorite directors. Totally. All right, so I got some good news good news or i don't know so check this out (laughs) good news or i don't know okay i don't know we'll take a vote weird stuff's been coming out about this whole pandemic that we're coming out of right so new report comes out we're in the bay area right so bay area is like san jose san francisco very populated part of california so check this out they revised the covid19 death toll so they went back and revised it people came back to life it seems it seems that 25 percent of the fatality of the fatalities were not caused by the virus oh Oh, <laughs> this! How convenient! Can I, can I just leave the room? Yeah, this is a, this, I'm, just, I'm gonna walk. You away. know what's what's crazy 25%? about this? Twenty five percent. That's a lot. Yeah. Now you know what's crazy about this is that the, here's what's crazy. It's not that they did this. That's fine. I, I, what's I crazy about it is that people were saying this. And they were they were yeah. labeled conspiracy theorists. That's right. They were demonetized. They were kicked yeah, shame, off social dude, media. Shame on people. You know that uh, Facebook, for example, that's the part that's bullshit. Bro. Facebook. Did you know that the, if you said that the virus came out of Wuhan lab, they would have kicked you off of Facebook, yeah. right? For now, they're allowing it because reports are showing that it might have actually come out of. Uh, now, are you guys lab. following? Uh, do, do you know anybody that's read Fauci's book? And is anybody? Fo- are you guys following any of this stuff? I, his what? emails are very ridiculous. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not following any of that stuff. So, so one of his wrong. emails, he said he went back and forth talking about how masks aren't really that effective. They don't protect the wearer. They might protect other people a little bit from you know big. You know, pieces yeah, of spit or whatever, but, but he says it's like very minimal. Uh, they said that sim- asymptomatic people probably aren't really spreading it, which that was a big thing. They talked about all these a- these symptoms. That's a people. really big one. That's Be- a- because then now, like, I mean, that became just hysteria for anybody is is basically disease. You're looking at everybody's disease that way because mm-hmm. it doesn't matter. Like, you're going to get my grandma sick. Yeah. So, so uh, what's going to happen in California? I just heard that Newsom pulled the whole. We were supposed to go in what in a week or so. We were supposed to go yeah, full. He just yeah. He just completely just didn't even like he, he went back on that promise a hundred percent. So, yeah. okay. I'm not, again, I'm not so following. It was supposed to be what June or July 15th. No, July Ju- 15th. Oh, I thought it was June 16th or some, one of those. Yeah. It was coming up real soon here. <laughs> it's, it's, it's June. It's a date either way. Yeah. 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 And, and what they were supposed to do an arbitrary date. They were supposed to lift the mask mandate. Was that what, what it would be? Yes. Lift it. Yeah. Yeah. Completely. Okay. And we then supposed I to go just f- went back on it. Yeah. So my theory is what, like, I guess maybe he's feeling the heat that he's not coming back. So now he's like, Oh, well, whatever. I guess I'm going to, Shit on everybody. On yeah, the way just just punish you now. Maybe yeah, June fifteenth. June fifteenth. See, yeah. You know, California's got the well, the U.S. in general. The cases are coming out very, very low, but California is tiny. I think we're having like a hundred. I know. So that's what, I don't, okay. So you you guys are following this. I'm not. So why, if we are cases are diving, we have I think some of the the highest percentage of people are vaccinated. Yeah, here. in the Bay Area, seventy percent. Okay, right. so yeah. 
what what was well, his what's reason? Left? What's his reason though? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, not what really is his it's reason. What's he, what is he saying? That's what I want to know. Like, <laughs> I, I know there's a bunch of bullshit behind the yeah, scenes. I don't, I, think, I don't know his statement. But what's it? it if you, if all those I, if all those numbers are going down, we originally were supposed to open up yeah. on this. How does he come? How does he make right. the case? If you're an, uh, yeah, follow the science guy. Like, let me hear the science. I think the case. What they're saying is they they want to. We're not out of the woods. We don't want to prevent. A particular a, a, a surge again, right? I think that's what they're saying. I believe that the reason why they're doing it is because it adds more pressure for vaccinations. Because remember, it's going to be you don't need to wear one if you're vaccinated. So it's going to continue to apply pressure. I think they're still trying right. to push to get more people vaccinated because obviously the more people get vaccinated, I don't know if this the lower is, the rate. Which is so weird. Yeah. That's, okay, that's how it is in Nevada right now, right? So Nevada is if you have been vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask. But then it's the honor system because legally they can't yeah, it, ask you to yeah. prove that you've been vaccinated. It violates HIPAA. Yeah. So then what the fuck? You're not legally supposed to tell anybody what your medical history yeah, is. Yeah, no. So the, like yeah. and so, that 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 is clearly defined. So that makes such a it's such a, a moot rule to have, right? Yeah. That makes no sense at all. Nonetheless, to- I mean a decent chunk of Americans have been vaccinated in California quite a bit. I think California is like eighth in the country. Right. I think uh the number one country for vaccinations is Israel, State? if I'm not mistaken. Oh, country. Yeah, I think Israel is uh, is number one. But I think our cases, if I'm not mistaken, we're close to 60%, 50 something percent in the US. I don't know what the number is for what they call herd hum, uh, immunity, uh-huh. where the, you know, certain percentage, I think it needs to be like 75% or more. So, in my, in my personal opinion, I think they're just trying to continue to apply pressure. Because I feel like what happens is they think if they lift these mandates, the pressure comes off and then less people will want to go get vaccinated because, the, because they'll see around them. Oh, it's not that bad because it's a reminder, right? Oh, everybody's still wearing a mask. We still need to go. Yeah, it's partially know. that, but it's mostly pride. Yeah. 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 It's because he said, and he put so much Maybe. weight on the fact that, you know, we were the only state that was so strict about that. And, mm. and look what it did. Nothing. Yeah. It's like, look at all the other states that are flourishing right now. Yeah. that's that's. There's actually not a bad point. When you compare the states, the populous <laughs> states, they're finding that. That's why it's glad. I'm glad. You know why? I read a huge article on this. So I read this article. There was a study. I don't remember what university did, but they did a huge study on the masks, the mandates, and what impact, and also on uh, mandatory social distancing, like closing down businesses. Yeah. And especially that. And they wanted to see from state to state, did it make a big difference if like in California, we had the strictest social distancing laws and we shut down the most businesses. And then you have states like Florida and Texas, which were much more loose. And what they found, and I I can't remember the university, this is an actual study. This is my opinion. This is a study. They found it didn't make a difference. Now the scientists couldn't understand why. Why didn't this make a difference if we obviously you're going to spread less disease if you're not around as many people. Why is it that California that shut down so many businesses didn't do that much better per capita than a place like Florida or Texas? And mm-hmm. here's what they found. And again, this is the one thing that we always dismiss is that in those other states where businesses were allowed to open much sooner and people were allowed by the state to do other certain activities, people voluntarily socially distanced themselves. Mm-hmm. People acted in their own best interest. So although businesses were allowed to be open, lots of people were not going to restaurants. If they did, they saw that there were people in there. They didn't go in there because there's too many people. Right. So people through their own actions actually did the social distancing thing. This was always my argument was mm-hmm. if you force people to do it, they're going to blame you when shit goes wrong. If you allow them to make those choices, they take on that responsibility you know, themselves. So I, exactly. I have a question for you that has nothing to do with this. It's nutrition related. Um, so you know that I did the whole, you know, carnivore-esque diet for a while, and then I've been introducing foods. Yeah, how's that been, by the way? It's been going good. I've, now, I've, I've reintroduced a lot of different foods and then, you know, pulled them out back in, just kind of test how things are reacting. I think I shared with you that I was really bummed out that, you know, I've been having whey shakes, and the whey shakes have bothered me. And mm. so I'm like, this kind of sucks because I love whey protein shakes. Now- I have also introduced the magic spoon back in and I've pulled it out multiple times. For some reason, magic spoon doesn't bother me, but then the a whey shake by itself does, yet I know magic spoon uses whey protein. Do you have any idea wow. why hmm. that would be? Is it because maybe the different ingredients added in? I, that's what I'm wondering. Is it because it, it, the magic spoon has got other ingredients that it's paired with and just pure straight whey is just it's and because maybe that's a really good question. Hmm. And I know that in the past that I've never I've been like 
So I, you have no reaction to the magic spoon at all, at all. But now, yet, are you what, eating like forty yeah, grams surprising. of protein at a time when you're eating the magic spoon? Like, is it the same amount? So that's what I'm wondering. Is it maybe because I'm getting more whey in a serving of a scoop of whey of protein in a in a like protein more concentrated. shake? Yeah, more concentrated. Yeah, because the the protein in Magic Spoon is they use whey, but they also use milk protein, which is both casein and whey. So maybe it's the amount of whey, or it could be some other ingredient. That's very strange. Yeah, I yeah. haven't, and I've I've already done this enough times that it's like, okay, Magic Spoon doesn't bother me at all, especially if I am using it with almond milk instead of using it with like dairy, right? So I've noticed that when I have it with that, I feel completely, and I could have a big old bowl, not like a tiny little bowl. So I'm a big bowl of it, which I'm assuming is, and I haven't measured, so I should measure to give you the mm. number so I can be a little more precise about this. Because your theory is that, oh, maybe I'm only getting 20-something grams from Magic Spoon of whey at a shot, and then mm -hmm. versus maybe getting 30 to 40 grams from the All whey concentrated. shake. concentrated? Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know. But it, it's I've done it enough times now that I'm sensitive to just the shake, and it's not bad, right? So what I still notice is that I can have little bouts of it. I can't take a lot of dairy in I wonder it. if it's the amount. It's, I wonder if it is the amount, or the or just being concentrated. Yeah, on it, right? exactly. So I don't know. I just thought that was really, really, really interesting. Magic Spoon is uh, just an interesting company for me to to look at. Period. I mm -hmm. don't see anybody coming close to competing with them in the market still. And yeah. and this is a. Uh, I mean, and they're gonna. There's gonna be competition. There has to be. Mm -hmm. This market's exploding. I can't think of another high quality protein, high protein cereal that also tastes They're everywhere, really good. right? Have you guys seen their they, yeah. I mean, they, but, they're but, uh, but this this good quality it, well, protein. it just makes me feel good too because like I I I don't like being the stickler so much with my kids and like what uh, you know having them still have a you know a, something that, that's a treat and fun and that they can have for like Saturday mornings like I enjoyed that whole experience but obviously that was garbage I was putting in and so it's like I it's just so nice to have that as an alternative that they can look forward to it as well and it's you know not as damaging. What was your cereal again when you were a kid? You had a favorite. If it was yeah, it pops? cinnamon toast crunch. Oh, dude. see, yeah, yeah a, right away. Boy, yeah. that's about that a was the jam. Oh, dude, it was like crack. Yeah, you guys. Did didn't like uh what was it smacks was it the one with the frog oh, yeah no, i don't like that one no. really that's was, that was terrible sugar smacks no they didn't dude. even mess around with the name by I the mean, way fruit loops was okay i mean frosted flakes like that was a good jam too but like, back in the day you gotta eat it quick though back in the day they were pretty bold you know what i mean like what are you gonna name this cereal for kids sugar <laughs> smacks, <laughs> smacks. Yeah. yeah you know yeah we're yeah. gonna yeah. <laughs> insulin yeah. sugar you know yeah. <laughs> diabetes insulin drip. smacks yeah, yeah. We I, forget, <laughs> I forget what the generic version was that's what we had that came with the big yeah. giant bag. oh yeah. uh sugar blow Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, I want some sugar blow, mom. It was probably called sugar puffs yeah. or something like yeah, that. I think it was. Something I like think that. it was sugar. Yeah. Malto okay, meal. Okay, honey, you just yeah. have to snort it. M Malto meal was the brand. Yeah. It came in a big yeah, plastic bag. Dude, didn't they have, right. they have those pixie sticks that basically, like, you just, it's just sugar, pure sugar and, like. Those are still popular, man. Dude. Oh, you dude, know people, that they, they now have, like, a, like one up those. They come, they come in, like, these big, thick tubes. You now. never had the one are from. Are you serious? Now, yes. you guys never it's like went. pure dextrose, right? Yeah, yes. Did you never go to the, the ice cream man and get the. The big long plastic stick. one, yes, the ones that like that's what I'm talking about. Oh my god! Did I you ever get that? that? Yeah. yeah, my brother. No, I never got that. Oh, like, I, I did, bro. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. was the, hard. That yeah. was the shit. I was the cookie dough guy. Yeah, yeah. You what? guys remember that? Not from the ice cream man. No, no, no. He just <laughs> no, no, no. no. I'm just like that was my thing. You just you went to the grocery store <laughs> just, and I'd walk home and eat a whole fucking thing. It was <laughs> disgusting. All your friends are at the ice cream <laughs> man. Just, oh, you're looking at him like you don't even know. Meat cookie dough, dude. Get the cookie dough. You don't even know. That's where it started. Hey, real quick, I hope you're enjoying the podcast. Head over to mindpumpfree.com. Check out our big arms guide. We have a guide teaching you how to build bigger, more muscular, leaner arms. It's totally free. Mindpumpfree.com. All right, enjoy the rest of the podcast. First question is from C Greenwood32. What are the golden rules of training for performance? Oh, so that's a Justin good question. Golden for sure. rules. Yeah, Justin. Give yeah. us a golden rule. Well, I mean, the the biggest thing I think that I've adjusted with athletes was to really, you know, pay close attention to like how your your joints um like the, like what your range of motion is, the integrity, like it, the movement quality in general. I think that uh, we we kind of leap past all of the the prerequisites towards training, and I think there's just so much attention there that needs to be had because 
these sports require so much out of our bodies. I mean, we're moving all different directions. We have to stabilize. We have to like provide power when we need it. So it's like so much you have to build upon that, that if you haven't put the work in there, I would immediately drive them back into like quality of movement and how we need to address each individual joint specifically. I think another golden rule that we have to list because we, I think we revisit this every, every week when we get a quaw is nothing is going to make you better at playing your sport than playing your sport. Yeah, in that fact, I would name that rule, skill is the most important thing. Yeah. Right. Skill over anything else. Because That's it, got to be the most it's important. It's a very cool, I mean, every week we have a question related to sports and also looking yeah. good and people should ask. Should I practice my sport more or well, should I work out more? Yeah, right. Yes. And it's all, if you want to be good at your sport, nothing is going to make you better at that than, than actually That's great. So sport. I would say definitely skill over anything else is always number one. And then when we get to physical performance, Justin said a good one. Mobility is very important. Lack of mobility is one of the number one reasons why people hurt themselves and then you can't play your sport at all. And another one I would add is that strength for most sports or for most physical pursuits is the foundational mm -hmm. physical pursuit. Meaning, what does that mean? That means if you get stronger, you generally improve your performance in other metrics. You can't say this for other metrics. Like if I make my speed better, my endurance better, my agility better. I don't necessarily get better in everything else, but with strength, we tend to. Now, this doesn't mean you just focus on strength and you ignore everything else, but it does mean that strength is very important. And it's more important the younger you are and the newer you are. As you get older, things get more fine tuned. What I mean by older is more experienced, not older like you know mm -hmm. I'm in my 40s and 50s, but rather I've been playing for years and years. Uh, then it's less important. But when you first get started, you want this kind of general strength because it's going to help you a you lot. You need a real strong base to work with. And, yeah. that, and that's why you guys brought up skills. Like it, it's hand in hand. You never uh, lose sight of, of skills training. That that has to evolve as you get stronger as well. Otherwise, uh, you know, there's there's going to be a big disparity between the two once. And this happened to me even just focusing completely on getting bigger, getting stronger. But now that affected my actual movement and my performance on the field because I wasn't keeping maintaining up my skill. Now, what about like the said principle, right? Like, I mean, what you guys, yeah. what you train is what you're going to get, right? So if you have somebody who is trying, has a very specific sport, uh, there's obvious specific movements that carry over that are going to benefit you versus doing real general. I know you made the point, mm -hmm. general strength is the foundation, but then after that point, if you're a, a, a tennis player trying to get good versus a football player, right. the, the specific exercises that you are doing is going to be completely different. A, a lineman doesn't require as much rotational strength, let's right. say, uh, like a tennis player is yeah. going to. Right? I'd say the, the more advanced in competition you are and the more experienced, the more important that is. Yeah. Right? If I'm training a, a new athlete, general strength is going to give them the most bang for their buck. But when you're training someone who's been playing for a long time, you want to start to focus more on specific types of strength. And mobility plays an even bigger role right. because as you get bigger, faster, you're playing against people that are better, mobility becomes oftentimes the difference between a winning team and a losing team. Typically, I mean, if you're at your peak performance, that's what's going to carry you, you know, and, and, and like provide longevity in your career is to really address those things. And I yeah. think that's why I brought that up first is because it was something that was completely like breezed over. Like we'd have like a barely even a warm up, and then we'd get into like this really intense mm -hmm. workout or, you know, intense practices and, um, it, and people were dropping like flies. And, and the reason being is, is there just wasn't that quality control yeah. and attention that direction. Well, to that point, another golden rule I think is that the, the real work is done in the off season. Mm -hmm. So I think there's the, that that was I like that, uh, the yeah. same. I mean, I used to talk about even competitors on stage. That's what I'd tell them. And I think athletes are the same way. Like the real work is done in the off season as far as how hard you're training and getting after it. Mm -hmm. Once you get into season play, you're just trying to prevent yourself from getting hurt. That's right. Like the, the, then it's more about protecting you than it is progressing. Mm -hmm. And so, and it becomes all skill mostly at that time and taking care of yourself. So the real work is done in the off season. Next question is from 12 weeks out. When should you train through pain versus taking time off? It seems like doctors want to sideline you if you have any pain at all. You know, the more you work out, the more you start to kind of learn your body, the easier it is for you to decipher good pain from bad pain. Why is it important to know the difference between good pain and bad pain? Because then I can move within my limits. I know what my edges are, right? So if my knee is sore or my hip is sore, 
It's slightly injured. I can work on mobility and I can go to the edge and know that if I go beyond this particular range of motion, I'm going to injure myself further, but I can move up to that edge and work on strengthening it, bringing blood to the area, mm -hmm. which oftentimes will accelerate recovery. So this is when it becomes uh, very important to understand the difference. Now, for someone listening who's like, oh gosh, that sounds so, so hard to, to decipher, you know, start with this sore muscles. Typically, moving them with low intensity is a great thing. Joints oftentimes need rest. Not always can you move through joint pain and make them feel better. Oftentimes, if a joint hurts, if it's in the joint, oftentimes rest is something that that particular uh, you know situation. Well, needs. I always think that like, so pain worries me, right? Someone says I'm in pain or something. I have pain somewhere versus I'm sore. Sore and pain are different. Like somebody can be very sore. Well, they both and, hurt. I know, but yeah. uh, and that and a lot of people interpret soreness as pain when right. it's just muscle soreness, which is not as big of a deal. And training through it a lot of times is actually a great thing for you to do. But if so, if a client complains to me that they have pain and like the pain is not going away, like like uh, soreness should progressively get better over time, right? So as days go by, yeah. you're le a little less sore, a little less sore just because you're resting and recovering. A lot of times, if you've injured something like and you have serious pain somewhere two days, three days, five days, doesn't make a difference. Mm -hmm. And that's where I'm like telling a client, okay, you should probably go see a doctor. We might need an MRI. We might need an x-ray because you may have tore something. You may have broke something. You may have fractured something. And that is to me pain, but being sore and it being, you know, painful because you're sore, that's a different story because you might've just overtrained a little bit. And then there's tremendous value in you doing mobility work mm -hmm. and working through it and getting some circulation, getting rehydrated, things like that. That's, but you have to be able to decipher the two. Yeah, well, kind of, this is kind of a rule of thumb. Does light movement make the pain feel better? All right. Mm -hmm. Usually, or worse. You, yeah, or worse, right? Usually, if it makes it feel better, then movement's what you want to do. If you do light movement and then it feels worse, then you probably should set yeah. it you know, aside and let it rest. I still think it's better, you know, to at least go through that and find where those edges are, mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, just so you know, because at the end of the day, you're still going to have to function and walk and move and do things and lift, uh, you know, bags of groceries. And, uh, you know, you're going to have to go on with, with the rest of, uh, how you would normally do things. And so to, uh, to, to start that process in a very gradual way, I think has value in itself, but it, it is scary to, when you're getting these parameters and the doctor's telling you like, no, I don't want you to move at all. Uh, but there's, there's definitely degrees of, of, you know, what, what your body's going to, going to tell you like in terms of a signal of pain like this is this is where you know that range is for you well that's a good point because even a, a you know physical therapist after you've tore something or broke something they, they take you through that i mean that's part of the process of re, re, mm -hmm. rehab is yeah they they put you to those those in limits i mean a lot of times rehab is is painful and is tough because they're oh, yeah. pushing those in those in ranges and stretching yeah. your capacity so uh that just a little risk if you got if you have a major injury and you're in major pain doing that by yourself without the expertise or guidance. Yeah. That to me, that's something yeah. that's like, I by, would, by the way, this is one of the main values of, of exercising regularly is it puts you in your body. I used to, it used to blow me away when I was a new trainer and I would train a client that really never exercised on a regular basis, just how outside of their body they were. Yeah. Like they would do an extra. I used to get this all the time. They're doing an exercise that's targeting a specific area. And they'd be like, where am I supposed to feel this? You know, what do you mean, where are you supposed to feel this? Yeah. You know, and they're fatiguing too, and they just feel it everywhere. Or they're sore, and they'd be like, I think I hurt myself. It's like, well, no, that's actually what muscle soreness feels like. Or they couldn't tolerate the fatigue or pain from regular appropriate exercise. So when you exercise on a regular basis, you actually learn to be in your body. You learn yeah. to decipher. Get in tune with it. Exactly. Because yeah. if you never do that stuff, you're literally detached from your body. And I've seen this time and time again with new clients, and it was always strange to me. But then you'd see them improve their connection as they continue to be consistent. Next question is from Peaceful Knievel. How should you deal with the clicking or popping in the shoulders when doing an overhead press? It isn't painful, but prevents me from going heavier and owning the movement. You know, of all the, the joints in the body, the shoulder joint is one of the more complex because you have the humerus that moves in the shoulder joint. You have the, uh, the AC joint, which does some function. Then you have the scapula that moves in lots of different directions. It can retract. It can abduct, adduct. It does all these weird 
movements, and all of those have to move together in the right way. And part of the reason why is we evolved yeah. to throw with tremendous accuracy. So we have this really mobile, interesting shoulder joint. Yeah. Meanwhile, it's floating. In yeah, there. <laughs> yeah, and and so if you're feeling pain, I mean, you're doing the overhead press. But what's happening is one of these moving parts isn't moving the way that it should. It's not moving optimally. And if you continue to push through this, you can cause yourself a lot of pain. So what I would suggest is avoid overhead shoulder press and focus on shoulder mobility. Then when you work yourself back into the overhead press, go very light and relearn how to move. Do not go heavy. The second you go heavy, you go back to your old way of moving. Go light and move in a way that avoids the clicking pain. And it won't feel very natural at first because it's a new way of moving, well, but eventually it'll become your new pattern. Well, this person is also not, they say it's not painful. And I, I've been told that it the popping sound is just air in your joints, right? Mm. So a lot of times when you hear popping and it's not painful. Well, they're right? saying it isn't painful, but prevents me from exchange. going heavier. Well, maybe which tells me there's something else. Either right? that or from fear. That, oh, that's what I'm, that's what, or at least that's how I was reading this. I was reading this like, because sometimes that you hear that like popping of the joints and it's not painful but you hear it like you'll hear, so i just did a video not that long ago on my instagram and you can hear my ankles popping like crazy but it doesn't hurt me at all yeah well there's a difference between joints popping because of the suction that's created and the and the gas that's released like when you pull a suction cup off the window and then there's the popping that comes from tendons and ligaments flipping over each other over and over right. again and that but, can become a problem yeah sometimes. which is the worry like it's going to be dislocated or you know like that so there there's different concerns there i think for people and, and maybe that, that's happened to them in the past and, and then they still have like a, a bit of clicking that they're kind of working yeah. through with that um but still like i mean that that's one of those things where i'm definitely kind of slowing it down you know working on like building up more tension and support around the joint as i'm going through those movements but you know part of that clicking like for some people is just going to be part of the process right i mean this is also uh, if this person is not priming you, you got to be priming i mean yeah. do i tell you what go do some handcuff with rotation or suspension trainer w's before you go and do your shoulder press or zone one in maps yeah. prime mm -hmm. uh address all that and then go in and then tell me now if it's a mobility issue and you're just not aligned very well, and then you go do these movements and then it completely eliminates that, then there's your there's your yeah. issue right there. You're just not you're just not lined up properly and it's not tracking like it should be, and you just need to prime for it. Not that I have this and I have this more right now than usual. I'm noticing my right side a lot because that's where I carry Max, and so I've got to put an extra work on on my right side to get it back in its its position before I go do bench press or overhead press. Uh, if I don't, I neglect it. I can do the movements, but I'll feel that clicking and popping. And mine actually bothers me. It doesn't feel good at all. Uh, so if that's the issue and you need to be priming before you go into these movements. Next question is from 713 Clown. If you eat the same healthy foods on a regular basis, does your body get used to the nutrients and they stop being beneficial? I've heard this before, and I don't know if I believe it. No, it doesn't work like that. What could happen is you could have nutrient deficiencies because you're not eating foods that contain particular nutrients. That's right. Now, if you're eating a lot of animal uh, products and meats, uh, you're probably okay. Red meat contains a lot. It's very nutrient-dense, so you're probably fine. This is more of an issue for vegans. When they get stuck in the cycle of eating the same vegetable sources or the same vegan sources... They run into issues because they need a more wide variety to provide themselves with nutrients that they'd be missing. Now, there is one potential other issue. If you're eating the same foods over and over again and you have gut inflammation, you could increase your risk of developing a food intolerance because your body's being exposed to the same food over and over again. You have inflammation of the gut. Your body now is developing an immune response to that particular food. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, the sweet potato that you eat every single day now is something that bothers your your gut or your body because you've developed an, an immune response. But other than that, you know, this is a not that big of a deal. I think if you eat one food all the time, yeah. this could become an issue. But if it's the same four or five foods and you have you, some animal you don't sources, he, you don't hear that though from carnivore, right? You don't hear that from them because of how nutrient dense meat is. Sure. So it's it's not, and it's not just vegans that have this issue, but it is if you do tend to only eat a few things and mm -hmm. you stick to that all the time and you don't get a lot of yeah. meat. There's it a, sort of loses its potent or, or potency, I guess. Right. Well, the or you just are missing some nutrients that just yeah. those those foods. There's are, that story. There's a, there's a girl. I think she developed some big issues. It was a story a while ago because all she would eat were chicken nuggets. She had a weird 
or, you know, aversion to any other food, and all she would eat eating pizza is, too, and yeah. there's stuff like that. Yeah, and they get away with it for a long ass time. Yeah, because a lot of these foods are fortified. Well, yeah, and the and yeah. the body is resilient as shit. Mm-hmm. I mean, it will it, it its goal is to survive. So, yeah. and if you're giving it some sort of fuel, it'll figure itself out. Does not mean it's running optimally, and it yeah. won't. Doesn't mean that it won't catch up with you eventually. Now, it doesn't it definitely doesn't mean though that the, it loses its benefit. I mean, you're 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 no no you're still getting the same nutrients. I I I think though there is some value you in like eating with the seasons just because it's already there in nature you see like how these different types of vegetables and plants you know have provided you with like you know like certain nutrients f- going into the colder that's true um you know seasons and so you'll get you'll get some of that benefit just by following nature patterns yeah now you know what the big value is with doing that is in my opinion psychological right i think there's a huge value to changing the way you eat either with the seasons or with your goals you're more accustomed to a wide variety. You're less likely to have to always be in this rigid box. And then if you go off, oh my gosh, I go way off and I binge all of a sudden. Like I never eat carbs and now all of a sudden I ate some carbs and I'm going to eat all the carbs type of deal, for example. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the psychological benefit is really high. You know who does this the most is bodybuilders, uh, but mainly when they're in preseason or, or excuse me, not preseason, pre-contest where they'll eat the same like yeah. four things all the time. It's like tilapia, yeah. chicken, broccoli, yeah, see that all the time. asparagus, and some white rice. It's the same thing all the time. That, But I, but again, it's more of a psychological issue that I see because then when they go off, it becomes like this, oh my gosh, the chains are off. I can do you know whatever I want. Well, we've always I mean, promoted that on the show, the food rotation. Yeah. I mean, I just think that's a, just a, be aware of those things, especially when there's foods like, like for example, like fish, right? So I, I don't always have fish in the diet, but I try and be, be aware of you know, when I've, I've done a week or two and I haven't got any fish in the diet, then I will actively go out there. Or when Katrina is asking me when she's ordering our, our food, our groceries and she says you know what, what do you want for dinner this week i say you know what like throw some fish in there it's mm-hmm. been a week or two since we had that make sure we get that in there or if we've been doing a lot of red meat then i'll throw some white meat in there so i just think it's a, and the vegetables we're trying to t- change all the colors up so i just think it's a good habit for people to try and get into is to rotate your foods because different foods provide different nutrients and if you have a good rotation you're probably going to cover most bases cover it, yeah. agreed look if you like our content you'll love our free stuff that we offer at mind pump free.com it's free great information we do it for all of our fans and listeners head over there also you can find us all on instagram so you can find justin at mind pump justin me at mind pump sal and adam at mind pump adam our vulnerability is when we don't wake up every day and ask ourselves why are people working out and what do we need to do to keep them consistent mm-hmm. at some point it may become more about education it may become about you know giving them different types of routines it might be about understanding that when people do begin to fall off the wagon, because maybe they had a life event, maybe they had a kid, how 